Hi there, I will talk about the transportation and safety requirements for the state of Texas and my district, Capel ISD. To understand the state requirements for transportation and safety, I went through the Education Code document for transportation, Chapter 34, and this is some of the key pieces of information that I found. Um, I didn't realize that if you have less than 10 students, um, a passenger car can be used for that, but for more than um, 10 students, it is highly recommended to use a bus. Um, districts and counties can contract um, school buses um, as long as, especially for extracurricular activities, as long as it is accounted for in PEAMS, which is the Public Education Information Management System. Um, I know that uh, in our district, we have purchased school buses through a bidding process. However, we contract bus drivers, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, buses don't have to have seat belts, but if they do, um, districts have to ensure that the students are wearing the seat belt. There can, there can also be a system for um, acquiring seat belts um, by the districts. Um, if they are donated, they can be utilized, or um, if they are purchased by the district, then they, they should be utilized. And I thought that safety part was a little bit interesting, that they're not mandated to have um, seat belts on the school buses. Um, also, uh, as far as safety is concerned, learners are not allowed to stand as the bus is moving. Um, the state requirement about reporting accidents for any, um, you know, bus is uh, anything, any vehicle that transports school children is that they need to report if there is what type of accident was it. Um, whether the bus was equipped with seat belts or not, the number of students and adults that were involved, um, the injuries, the number of type, number and types of injuries that were sustained, um, and whether the people who were wearing seat belts sustained injuries or not, and this has to be reported to the state. Um, I also learned that school districts are not required to provide transportation um, unless they have learners in special programs. So any learner who is in a special education program or part of the 504 um, uh, or is eligible under the 504 is required to have a um, transportation facility available to them. Uh, only if it is discussed in their, uh, if it's part of their IEP. Also, um, the school districts receive funding from the state through foundation school program as part of um, their transport school transportation system allotment. Um, and uh, there are um, allotments that are um, considered based on who lives two or more miles um, away from the, from the campus or for learners who live within two miles but they have to face hazardous or high traffic area or a high violence area. Um, you can also have school transportation and get funded if um, a learner is supposed to be transported to a grandparent's home or a daycare facility, um, or if a learner has been identified as homeless or a foster child by the district's coordinator. In those cases, transportation is provided to the learner and it is funded through the state as well. Now, the district can charge a, a reasonable fee for transportation for learners who live within two miles, um, unless they are, of course, funded by the state. Uh, behavior is also one of the state requirements where the state law sets um, a standard where, um, you know, the conduct of students on the bus is an important factor because of 
the transportation. Um, uh, the state law says that a bus driver is prohibited from operating a school bus if the door of the school bus is open or the passengers um, or, or if there are more passengers on the bus. Um, and the Texas Education Code permits the bus driver to refer a student to the principal's office um, if there is a lack of discipline on the bus. Um, and the principal has the right to revoke um, student priv uh, the privilege for the student to ride the bus because safety, of course, cannot be compromised. Our district has 11 elementary schools, um, three middle schools, two high schools, and one ninth grade center. Um, as well as one alternative um, school as well. And um, our bus services are different throughout the district. I can speak more for our campus in a little bit, but before I go into that, um, in our district, we own the buses and the drivers are contracted through a different company. And the district does provide um, bus services to learners who live within two miles if um, it is a hazardous, or when I say hazardous, I mean a high traffic area or they have to cross a major street to get to the school. All buses are equipped with seatbelts and the general rule is that the learners must wear seatbelts. Um, discipline is a huge issue because we, just on our campus, we have about 10 buses that transport kids to and from school. Um, we are a campus of 732 learners and almost all of them ride the bus. We just have about 50 or 60 kids that are um, car riders. So with that many learners on a bus, discipline can become an issue. And um, as a campus, we take that seriously. Um, in previous years, certain privileges have been revoked for uh, either a number of days or permanently, depending on um, the, the issue or how often it is repeated by the same learner. Um, now, speaking for other campuses, our coaches for middle school and high school are required to have a bus license so that they can transport kids to and from matches. Um, so that is something that we maintain in our district. And of course, um, um, there's a special ed bus for learners um, that have high needs, um, either they're wheelchair bound or um, they, they require uh, to be transported on a special education bus, bus. and um, uh, there are also several buses that transport learners to daycare facilities um, at the end of the day. In order to be hired as a bus driver, um, the driver needs to be at least 18 years old. They must hold a Class B commercial driver's license with a passenger and school bus endorsement. Um, they need to clear an annual mental and physical exam. Um, they need to be certified in school bus safety education, which is a 20-hour certification course, or they should be registered um, and possess an enrollment certificate. And they need to be free of any felony or misdemeanor conviction for a crime involving moral turpitude. Um, in order to renew their license, they need to go through that recertification training every three years. And of course, the um, felony and misdemeanor check and the annual mental and physical exam takes place every year.